Hello everyone and welcome back into the shop. In this week's video we are going to be working on a uh, collapsible workbench slash assembly table type thing. And the main challenge with this project was making it collapsible. That was like the hardest part of this project. But with this I had it where the legs would collapse in and then the table itself would also then fold in half to pretty much cut the size in half once again. So for this project, I used construction lumber and a couple sheets of plywood. However, in order to make this table collapsible, I had to invest a little bit into some hardware in order to make the legs lock and also be sturdy enough to support the entire table. So to start out and to also give this table a little bit of a custom look, I milled a bunch of lumber down and I was able to then glue those pieces together in order to make up a larger dimension for the legs. Now going into this, believe it or not, I actually didn't have a plan to go off of. I just had the rough constraints that I wanted and the capability of the collapsible feature. So with that, like I said, I decided to do the legs first and then kind of go from there. So for the actual construction of the top, I created a dado in the four pieces that were then mitered together. And inside of that, I put the pieces of plywood, which I first cut down into two halves. And then to further secure this joint, I added a couple of brad nails in as well. And this is where you can see that having a larger assembly table slash outfit table would be really nice because then instead of cutting everything down on the ground and hurting my back, I could be upright and standing with a saw cutting on the table. Now because the uh, lumber and the cutting isn't actually that difficult, this is where it starts to get actually a little bit more complicated with the hardware. But I had to get a lot of hardware that I then returned and went back and forth on several designs in order to get the legs to be sturdy. The first iteration of the leg involved only one bracket, which is the metal bracket, and what I quickly realized was that the hinge in combination with the one bracket was not going to be strong enough to support the legs. The racking was only uh, being braced in one direction and I needed one in the opposing direction. And of course I had to learn this the hard way. So uh, probably several hours later I then realized that I had to add the other brace in and that was when I had to once again make a trip to the hardware store in order to get the right hardware that I needed for that. And now you can see that the leg is finally working. This took several hours of really, really stretching my brain in order to figure out how to do this. And one thing that was maybe a little bit extra, but I think I actually added a lot of strength, was adding some construction adhesive to the metal parts that are then joined to the wooden parts. But then I decided that I actually wanted to add another piece on top that was a quarter inch of I think it was a Douglas fir uh, paint grade plywood because the folks that are actually taking this table, they're actually going to paint on top of it and they wanted a nice smooth surface that they could paint on. And then I also added some trim around the edge because I raised the height a little bit with the uh, thickness of the new sheet of plywood. And this was actually nice though because I remembered this before I cut the pieces. So the trim actually fit perfectly around the edge and all I had to do was flush trim everything, round it over, cut the miters, and then sand it. And I have to say, the final result of those little trim pieces is actually really, really lovely. And I really like the, the overlapping layers. Now that is going to do it for the table itself. Now before you guys ask, I don't have plans for this. But if you have any questions more specifically, I'd be down in the comments and answer any questions that you guys have. So I hope that if you were going to maybe try and build this, I could help you out in that way. And the last detail that I added 
are for when the table is actually completely folded and a couple of locking hinges secure it really well. So because I condensed this project down a little bit and most of the things that I filmed were mainly time lapses, I decided at the end of this video I was going to do a Q&A. So both on Instagram and on the YouTube uh, comment section, I asked you guys to ask me questions that I was then going to answer. So with that said, I'm going to read a couple of those off here and answer them. So the first question I have is from Jacob and he asks, if you had to choose one tool, hand tool or machine to pick as your favorite, what would it be? that would be the jointer. In terms of uh, enjoyment and satisfaction, I have to say that the jointer uh, probably gives that to me the most. And I think that is because that is pretty much the first tool, the jointer, that you're going to use in a project uh, for making fine furniture. For some reason, it is actually quite enjoyable. With the planer, it's actually kind of boring. All right, the next question I'm grabbing here asks, how do you earn money to buy tools? I'm about the same age as you. So if you're the same age as me, and you're looking to purchase some tools in order to do some woodworking or do some projects, I guess the first thing that I would think about is what can you do for other people, whether that's uh, family members, friends, neighbors, in order to get a little bit of money. Now you could obviously go get a job if you're in school as well and earn your money that way. But for me, I haven't actually had that job and I've always found stuff and I've always seeked opportunities in other directions that I could make money in. And to be quite frank, a lot of those things involved labor. So landscaping, uh, construction type stuff. Now, once I obviously got some tools and was doing projects regularly, that is when I was able to start making some money with doing projects. All right, now the next question is kind of gonna go off of the last question that I answered about making money. And that is, what do I think about Festool tools? Now, I can only speak on this a little bit because the only two Festool items that I have are the Festool Domino and also a shop vac. And I'd have to say with those two products that I am extremely happy with them. However, with that said, I only see maybe a couple of tools coming from the Festool line that I would actually really want to invest my money in. And I already have a couple of those already. Uh, the one thing that I would probably like to add is a track saw. Now, other than that, I think that if you're looking to spend money and if you're looking to get some tools for yourself, I would go to Home Depot, I would go to Lowe's, and even though they are big box stores, they have some really, really great cordless tools and that would be a good thing to go into. Now, with that said, I purchased a lot of my initial tools on Craigslist on eBay. All right, the next question we have is, how did I afford to upgrade to uh, some of the paramedic equipment that I have in my shop? Now, there really isn't just one answer for this. And I'd have to say the main thing that I did that allowed me to get these machines was really just working my butt off. I worked really, really hard in order to uh, pretty much afford all the tools in my shop. Um, I sold a lot of stuff on eBay, believe it or not. I sold a lot of Lego sets, toys, a bunch of the stuff that was in this garage before that we didn't actually need, I was able to sell and get money for. I guess if right now we're talking about the Paramatic stuff, um, you guys remember that I had the Paramatic drum sander, the 2244, and someone asked why I sold that. And the reason for that is because I wasn't actually really using it as much as I thought I was going to. After I sold the drum sander and eventually I got the uh, jointer and planer together. So the last question I'll answer here is what courses am I taking in school? Now I think I mentioned this actually in the, uh, in the last video and that is that I am going to uh, community college right now. Right now I'm pretty much just in the general education classes. So right now I'm doing like accounting, uh, a speech class, a health class, a psychology class, and a sociology class. Pretty much just GE stuff for right now. So that is going to wrap up this video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed that q and I can do that more often if you guys want. I hope that you guys uh, learned something about me or about what I do. So with that said, that is all that I have for you guys today. Take care and I will see you guys in the next video.